took a trip with a stranger. I went to Monaco with a stranger, and here's how it went. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Riss, and today is story time. Today is story time, guys. So you remember how back in the day, like, when we were taught as children, stranger danger, don't talk to strangers, don't take trips with strangers, X, Y, and Z. So today I kind of want to chat with you guys how clearly, you know, I guess I didn't learn that lesson that well, but I took a trip with a stranger. I went to Monaco with a stranger, and here's how it went. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your glass of wine, your drink of choice, and let's have story time. As you guys remember in one of my travel tales, I told the story of my first experience in a hostel when I visited Nice, France. Quite the experience, make sure you guys check out the video. But one of the positive things that came out of that experience was I met this wonderful Australian girl. Our first encounter was like, our friend and I had just finished touring the town. We came back to the hostel and we noticed that we had a new, uh, I guess you could say room resident. She was sick. She had an ear infection. She was really going through it. As soon as we walked in the room, she was really polite. We all like did introductions to one another. A better guest than the first guest that we had in the room, I must say. And again, be sure to visit the hostel story to know what that experience is like and what I'm referring to. But she was really welcoming, really inviting. Her spirit just felt really awesome. So we kind of hit it off immediately. After we chatted it up a little bit, we all decided, hey, let's grab dinner. So we headed over to this diner that was a short walk away from the hostel. It was named Woody's Diner. It served American cuisines, burgers, fries, onion rings, shakes. The food honestly was a 10 out of 10. We sat all night, talked about where each other was from. She was backpacking for two months. She had been all over Europe thus far and then ended up in Nice. And here we were colliding, meeting each other at the hostel and now grabbing dinner. So the vibes were good, dinner was going great, conversation was flowing well, energy felt good, nothing felt tense, we weren't worried like, oh my God, we're at dinner with a stranger, we have another hostel guest, is it gonna be weird like the first one? No, vibes were really good. So she was like, what are you guys doing the next day? And we kind of explained to her that, you know, we didn't really have an itinerary of things that we wanted to do, we were kind of, taking the trip on a whim and you know just going with the flow we had did a walking tour previously the day before and saw so many different sites in these and we were kind of like hmm we might just take the train to monaco we heard it's a really short distance away and it might be a cool thing to do why not conquer two birds one stone um so she was all like oh my god you guys are going to monaco that's so cool like i kind of want to go with you guys we didn't really think about it again. We were just like young, excited, free. We're outside, we're in Nice, and we're like, all right, cool, why not? Well, I have you guys. Let's just take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe so you guys can stay in the loop for when I post more videos. So here we are, planning this trip to Monaco with a stranger. Now we're kind of like, you know, it shouldn't be weird. It's just gonna be one day trip. Like, let's see what happens. So we go back to the hostel, we sleep, we get up early, bright rising, and we head to the train station. We are definitely taking this trip to Monaco. We get to the train station. Tickets were only approximately like five euros, which was really great. Um, we got our tickets, we boarded the train, and we are off to Monaco. The train ride was really good. It only took about maybe 15 to 20 minutes. We passed cans on the way. We saw beautiful beaches as the train went by. It was definitely a nice scenic route. We made a mock itinerary just to make the most out of our short time. Again, we were only taking a day trip, so we wanted to make sure that we took advantage of it as best as possible. We wanted to see the Japanese garden, walk the famous Monte Carlo strip with the casinos and the luxury cars, shops, walk by the pier. I wanted to see the Princess Palace, but I also didn't care whatever we saw. I was just so happy that we were on our way to Monte Carlo. I was like, I am living my Gossip Girl dream right now. All those episodes of me watching Blair Waldorf live her life in Monte Carlo, like this is my moment. So I was just excited that we were even there. 
we ended up in the casino square. There was a bunch of luxurious cars, a beautiful fountain. Everybody was having their Instagram moment as they should. And we met a really nice security guard who invited us into the casino just to walk around and see it. Obviously, Monte Carlo is a very rich place. Um, so just not any and everybody is led into the casino from what I could understand from the gentleman. Um, but he was nice enough to allow us inside and, and show us different portions in the casino. And it was a cool thing to see. Apparently, it's a real tourist attraction, but a lot of heavy rollers obviously go to the casino and have a time. Part of our itinerary was the St. Nicholas Church. It was built in the 19th century, but still stands strong today. The infrastructure is very well maintained and it's super beautiful. We obviously ended up at the Princess Palace, completing my Gossip Girl moment. Love that for me. In the later half of the day, we made our way over to the Japanese garden. Guys, guys, this is definitely something to do, rather see while you're in Monaco. The Japanese garden is so gorgeous. Free entry, which is another beautiful thing, especially if you're trying to travel affordably. It was something about that scenery that really just settled my soul. The Japanese garden is definitely a site I recommend to those heading to Monaco. After the Japanese garden, we grabbed a bite to eat, had a little dessert, and headed back to our train. Overall, honestly, it was a phenomenal experience. That was my first time meeting someone from Australia, so that was also cool to hear about her culture along the way of us experiencing another country's culture. Honestly speaking, I'd probably do it again. It was a really great experience. Um, no zeros on my board for it. I'm not encouraging you to go travel with strangers. Very much so, be smart about it. But it was a great experience. We headed back to the hostel. I think we had maybe like one more day there. Um, and she headed on her way. I forget what her next destination was, but again, she was backpacking and we headed back to university. And we made it back safely and everything was great. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to be smart about your travels, your travel buddies, your travel partners. But also know that spontaneity can bring some amazing memories.